Right, welcome to David Tom Creation's channel. Um, it's a new year and a new synth. Um, I've been looking around for quite a while now and uh, swithering between various uh, things like the DeepMind, the Minilog XD and the new uh, ESM Hydrosynth. Um, but I have decided to get myself a model electronic Cobalt 8X which is the big 61 key version um, and it is an 8 voice extended virtual analog synthesizer and it is a bit of a beast it weighs about 9 kilos um, so I thought I'd do an unboxing because I haven't done one for ages um, I don't think I even did an unboxing on my wave state um, so yeah so uh, like I said I've been looking around for a while I want to get another synth to um, to pair up with the wave state and I wanted to get something a bit different, sounds a bit different. This is obviously a bit more analogue uh, than the wave state um, and uh, it's got quite a nice interface. It's kind of, you know, knob for function um, idea and it's got a guitar key bed. Um, so yeah, so let's open it up and have a butcher's hook. If I can manage to manoeuvre my way around this with my usual lack of space. Oh. Um, right, that one, that the only one. Right. There we go. Let's see if we can get that back a bit. Right, quick start guide. Very nice. Um, screen navigation, connections, presets, preset saving, quick recalls, that's quite handy. Um, right, so we've got uh, the uh, USB cable and a kind of multi power adapter with uh, the European and uh, whatever that is, American. Um, and this will be the little power plug. So it has like adapters for the different countries. So there we go. Um, right. Let's see if we can actually get this out of the box without wrecking it. Oh. Right. There you go. I'll move this over here. That'll be better. Right. Right, it is quite because it's it is a little metal in it. Um, right, it's just going to fit on it. Oh, there we go. Right, get rid of these. Right, there's certainly a fair heft to it. Got a little joystick, so it doesn't have more wheels um, at all. It's uh, it's got a little joystick controller. Um, right. And uh, one of the nice things about it is a gorgeous colour. gorgeous colour um because when the, in the videos you kind of it's difficult to tell what it's like because it's kind of like it looks kind of metallic but it's a matte metallic finish if that is if you get my drift um is it for the keyboard? There we go. That is oh, oh there's a nice keyboard. I think I've, I've not really tried anything with a Futar keyboard. I think some of the my uh, um, Native Instruments S forty nine. I think that I think the S eighty eight, the big one, has a has a Futar keyboard, but I'm not sure that one is. 
Um, but uh, yeah, so you've got a massive big fucking cutoff filter. Got volume. You got the little screen. Uh, got the sequencer, ARP, modulation. That's the oscillator size. So um, uh, four oscillators. Has uh, an A, A1, A2, B1, B2. And then there's all the different algorithms. LFOs, effects, and uh, effects, the effects, effects level. And uh, yeah, it's got quite a cool, because um, arpeggio in sequence is really nice. The one thing about the wave state is that uh, it doesn't exactly have the greatest ARP in the world. Um, it has very, very few options. Um, so this is your pitch bend and modulation. So I'm assuming that's pitch bend and that's modulation. And I think you can maybe assign it to other things, not sure. Um, it's not as nice as the wave state one, which kind of, you know, stays in place, but that is quite unusual. And it's got a tiny little screen. Which, you know, given the size of these things, you know, you think they could maybe get a bit of a bigger screen. Um, right, so let's uh, let's just um, get it set up and uh, power it up and then we'll, um, we'll go through some of the, um, the patches. Uh, hello and welcome back to part two of the uh, Cobalt 8x uh, unboxing and first look um, we've got it all set up now and uh, it's all running very uh, very well um, I've uh, obviously had a look through some of the the patches and um, I'm just going to run through a few of them later on but um, anyway so this is this is it uh, plugged in uh, you can see there's LEDs on the effects buttons and the um, filter amp and mod uh, and also you've got ARP um, and these um, these lights are the lights for the sequencer so there's 16, 4, 4, 4 and 4 um, and uh, you've got uh, your uh, patch button there uh, to scroll through if you can see that, you won't be able to see the screen from there. Uh, scroll through your patches. And then I've got it to auto-load. In the settings, you can get it to auto-load. Because as as default, you've got to press in to load the um, the preset. Um, so uh, so you don't have to do that. It just auto-loads it now. Uh, and that's just a, a thing you can do in the, in the settings. Um, and like I said, you've got your um, two algorithms... Uh, which you can change. There's 30. I think they've added. There's 34, but I think they've maybe added more in the the latest 1.2 update. Um, so you've got 34 for algorithm one and 34 for algorithm two, and then you've got um, uh, coarse tuning and then fine tuning with these two for uh, A and B. Um, and then you've got uh, so some of these. Th there's quite a few of of, of these. Um, are uh, you know have secondary um, uh, shift options uh, so uh, for instance this is the drift for the oscillator uh, and uh, you can also uh, shift to the width um, and uh, also for the um, octave up and down um, that's to switch to mono or poly and uh, transpose is unison on shift and chord is stack uh, and then you've got uh, so that's just so you can either latch it on, so you can either press and hold, and and that's it latched on. Uh, so yeah, so that's um, that's it. And this is patch zero zero zero. This is riser sequence, and it has uh, attack. Um, no, it has after touch. It says AT uh, SQ. So AT is for after touch, and SQ is for. Sequence. And if we look at the, the app on screen, you can see if you've got the sequence, it has its own riser sequence there. Uh, and also that's the effects, modulation, and the preset manager. Um, and then you can see uh, what waves uh, 
algorithms it has and all the various other parameters cut off attack delay decay sustain release um so yeah so the app's quite good um mainly i mean it's the same as waste mainly i use the app for just renaming the presets that i'm doing and uh, generally i don't really do an awful lot there but it's actually it's quite handy because it's quicker to, to load um because in the preset manager you've got sequence presets and also effects presets so it's actually quicker sometimes to um to load and it only it, it has a hundred slots for um sequences but it only comes with about 10 so i've uh, i've found some other sequences on the website um so i kind of downloaded and imported those um as as well so and uh, some other effects uh i think um um yeah so there's there's quite a lot of effects there's um the the effect slots are are pretty much um all full so that's something that uh, is quite good and like i said it is actually a lot quicker just to double click this um than load them in the um on the hardware because you, you have to hold all three uh, effects buttons and then you know scroll around and stuff so if you kind of know what you're you wanting because you can see the you know the names here you've got basic tremolo ping pong delay um slap back delay whatever ear drone psychedelic warp lo-fi so yeah so it's the app's pretty good for for that um but like i said they certainly haven't given you much in the way of sequences um with it which uh but obviously you can you can create your own so um or just change one of the ones that they've got and re um and resave it so um um so yeah so that is uh, so we'll play the um play the sequence for this riser pad and just see what it's like Still play over this um, when the um, sequence is going. Um, so yeah, so like I said, the first 10 uh, patches have got to... Uh, So um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. You, like I said, you can you can obviously apply these sequences to any preset um, as well. So you're not uh, you're not uh, stuck with these uh, these ones. Uh, uh, you know, with the uh, the preset patches. Uh, band of brassers. <laughs> You do have to change the volume quite a lot. There's, there is a there is a bit of variation in the patch volumes, but Oh. 
Yeah, so there's some quite nice sounds. There's a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of nice pads, obviously, and uh, there's not much in the way of strings in the in the in the preset. So, uh, but uh, yeah, there's some nice pads, uh, a lot of nice basses, leads, um, uh, you know, synths, which is really you know seems to be what it's mainly designed for, um, you know, as as far as sound. But um, anyway, and as far as the the build quality on this thing is is superb. I mean. It's it's a, a a steel chassis, and this is anodized aluminium. Uh, this beautiful blue, um, and uh, everything feels good. I mean, the only thing that I don't kind of like off the bat is that the buttons are a bit plasticky, um, and there's no there's no texture, so there's no ridging uh, on the the sides. Uh, uh, and they're not like, you know, some of the ones, like my wave state, for instance, has got more of a kind of soft feel to it. Um, but, um, yeah. Um, I mean, that's one of the few, the few things that I don't like, you know. I mean, I, I don't know if it's able to swap them out, but, um, and I think they could maybe have coloured maybe some of the, I mean, like my wave state's got white um, and black. And um, like even just like the ADSR, and maybe the algorithms or something, because you're using those quite a lot. You're using these a lot, and the mix button, uh, which uh, you can mix between both uh, algorithms. Uh, so, for instance, that patch, if we go back to that patch, I'll reload it, and uh, you can see that's all the way across to, well, I don't know if you can see that, it's all across to one. And then I can mix, crossfeed it. So that's 50-50. for this particular preset was a complete waste of time because it hasn't changed it um but um uh yeah so if we'll try and find one that actually here we go that might be better so that's something that you can do for um for each um uh, preset as well so um and uh, and the um, the little joystick thing's quite cool because you can. So um, yeah, on the <laughs> I got it wrong on my intro. Um, so the the pitch bend is basically I like to call it. Um, and then uh, modulation is north south. Um, so yeah, and, and this bit kind of turns around, and it's all metal. Um, in fact, apart from the buttons, just about everything seems to be metal, which is why it's a bit weird that they they didn't make these a bit more tactile. Um, you know, but hey ho. Um, and like I said, the the Fatar key bed is really nice, um, really nice after touch. Oh, I've got a, there's a one called Ballad. Where is it? Yeah, this one. Um, So yeah, I'm glad I got the um, the 61 uh, 
uh, instead of the 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 kind of normal thirty seven, which is basically there. Um, and one of the reasons was it was such a good price. I mean, I got a really good deal on Music Matter, and I'll leave a link in the description because it's gone back up, but um, it came down to like five sixty, um, and the thirty seven is is four nine nine pretty much everywhere. Um, and it's now going back up to 595, but I think that's still the cheapest you're going to get it. Um, cause most of the other ones like Anderton's and, uh, um, you know, guitar, guitar, uh, you know, gear for music. Um, they're all running about 620 to, you know, six, whatever. Uh, I mean, it retails, I think it's 699. Um, so to get it for, you know, 560 was an absolute steal. So, um, cause I wasn't planning on getting the 61. Um, I think, uh, I'm glad I did because it's such a beautiful keyboard. Um, I'll play the, um, the sequences quite nice on this. Right, so you can see, so we're in animation one on this. Uh, this is pulsar sequence for this particular um, patch, which is patch 11, uh, pulsar plot. Um, and you can see that the animation one is going to the um, FEG depth. So uh, you can obviously um, assign that to, well, as you can see, more or less, you know, <laughs> everything. I can't remember how many it is, but it's, um, <laughs> it's a lot anyway. Um, so you can see that it's really quick to, um, hang on, I'll move my water out of the way. Um, it's really quick to just draw things in and, and then like I said, you can just keep adding in. Uh, so you can see that made quite a difference if we play it. Um, so yeah, so that is uh, how you can do, I mean, and this is obviously quicker to do this via the app. You can't really, obviously, um, <clears throat> well, you can't, I mean, you can't draw it in, but uh, uh, you can, uh, you know, uh, adjust the um, the parameters on the keyboard to uh, to actually change these. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to do a full video on, the, on using the app um, at a later date, because like I said, I've only had this a, a week, I think. Yeah, I got it last Thursday. So... Um, still just getting to grips with uh with it but i have already done some patches um so yeah uh you'll be you'll be glad to know um so yeah so um that is um that is probably pretty much it for for this kind of follow-up like i said this is i'm, I'm going to do obviously longer videos um and just go over a lot more of the features uh or th the way that uh, the way that you can create patches and save them so you get 300 um, hang on, I'll just go back to the preset manager. You can see this on screen. Uh, so you get 300 um, with it, and then there's space for another 200 more. Uh, so you can kind of scroll through, uh, and it goes uh, 
horizontally. So you've got bank zero, bank one, bank two, and bank three. So that's it. They're, they're grouped in banks, so you they're not grouped into like genres or instrument types or so like the wave states obviously can be different it's grouped into synths you know drums strings effects arps whatever um but this isn't um so uh and unless you kind of see the it says pad there um or whatever it might be you know lead uh you've not really um you don't really know where it is so uh um, and like i said uh what i've done is i've actually imported some uh as well and i'll show you how to do that i mean it's really easy um so i've Im imported a preset pack from uh called baltica um so i've not even gone through that so that's another hundred um presets so i'm going to go through that as well and, and find some because some of those are quite nice and then i've done uh what's that 14 already um of my own uh so we'll just play one of these or something this is called echo beach you can see there I've done a few with sequences so there's a couple of sequences there's an ARP as well I'll play one of the songs it's got the ARP in it Yeah, so um, they're um, they're um, they're quite good, um, quite good uh, fun, and uh, they are they are relatively easy to um, to kind of uh, create and save. So that's good because I'll mean I'll probably end up putting a pack on the uh, the store of Cobalt Eight patches as well to go along with my my wave state ones. Um, next video will be um, a no talking one. You'll be glad to know, um, and I'll go through. I think my favourites from the first 150 patches, and then I'll do another one uh, for 150 to 300 kind of favourite ones. Um, so, yeah, and it'll give you a better idea because obviously I try and do a kind of cross-section of, of of patches as well to, to give you an idea of what sort of sounds you can get out of it. Um, so, yeah, so that's it for, uh, for this week. Um, uh, as usual, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to check out my store um, for uh, preset packs and loads of freebies. Um, thanks for watching and I will see you next week. Bye for now.